Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk, NFTs, Crypto, and Web3. I am your host, Asia the Bird. To have a wonderful guest with me today, he's a digital entrepreneur and the founder of Metaverse Generation. Please welcome BK Han. Hello, BK. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, Asia. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. You are most welcome. So I want to go ahead and get started by asking, where are you from? And like, tell us about your career. Um, well, I am uh, in Asia, Singapore. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been, I'm a civil engineer by, by profession and I've been in the construction real estate industry for 29 years. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, before COVID in 20, to, uh, to, until 2018, mm-hmm. uh, about two years before that, uh, I was involved in major, in mainly uh, real estate projects, uh, mega projects, uh, t- township developments, hotels, hospital, uh, um, residential projects. So uh, I was in China for the last 12 years before the COVID. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, spent some time in Thailand, about two and a half years. And before that, uh, yeah, mainly in Singapore. Yeah. Mm. That's really, really cool. Now I want to get into NFTs, Web3 and crypto. What got you interested in the digital space of um, NFTs, Web3 and crypto? Well, I think it all started, um, I mean, being in the real estate, you know, um, asset is, is something of value. So you can see most of the wealthy people in the world are all real estate people. So they own assets such as real estate. So mm-hmm. uh, when, when the internet came along, it was still, you know, just online. Everything is online, trading online, business online. And, and when uh, metaverse concept came about mm-hmm. especially when nft were, were the hot topic uh, about a year and a half ago uh, i saw the immediate uh, value in terms of asset in the digital world so um, especially a few metaverse projects um, like decentraland uh, sandbox uh, the walk so these are the projects that actually been creating digital asset such as mm-hmm. real estate online virtually and people own it people can trade it and people can just build on it in a much more quicker way than the traditional projects that are used to be you know to buy a piece of land to acquire a piece of land is is, is involved a, a long process it involves even transfer of funds so that's very complex but in the digital world it's much easier so i saw the big potential and at the same time, I also see a lot of uh, investor having that interest and went in already. So that's the reason I decided to, when I have a break between my projects, I maybe have a go and I'm stuck. And especially during COVID, it's even uh, the, the attention and focus to see the importance of having the digital world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to get into, in your bio, you did express um, earlier in this interview that you've um, had 29, 20, 29 years of experience um, in real estate. So based on those years of experience, what are some of the things that you've witnessed in terms of the economy in Asia? Like, What, what have you noticed? Well, um, I, I think before COVID came, I, I'm always advocating uh, doing business online as much as you can. So if you can sell a pair of shoes online, why do you want to have a, a store, physical store, and 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 uh, sell it on a physical store. So um, in China, when I was uh, in for the twelve year, I saw the transformation of um, a physical store going online. And you know, t- uh, 2017, 2018 uh, were like uh, live streaming, s- selling is is a big big thing. You know, uh, one night, one or uh, two of the top live streamer. Austin Lee and Wei, Wei Ya, uh, they can sell, uh, I mean, in one night, okay, five hours of streaming, they can make enough money to buy a, a, a real condominium just one night. So there are a lot of people who make a lot of money because uh, when you have products that is online, available for everybody and anybody anywhere in the world or any, any part of the country at least, uh, you, you are creating a bigger exposure than having a store you know, in, in, in a locality where only 
the physical traffic counts. So you're exponentially growing the potential of exposure plus if you are able to handle the logistic to deliver. So for example, Austin, in two hours, you sell 15,000 pieces of lipstick. If you walk to any store anywhere, any big department store, even the airport uh, duty-free, I don't think they ever, ever had 15,000 pieces of uh, um, lipstick that is sold within an hour. So that is the kind of speed they can do in terms of selling. And uh, one more example is when Wei Ya went to Korea to do a sort of a live streaming, mainly for beauty products. She came back to China with 15, uh, 12 container of face masks. 12 container. Wow. That, that is the kind of sale. Okay. And, and she, she her one single um, live streaming can be millions of people watching. Okay. In seconds, it's thousands of people buying her thing. So um, that I saw the potential. That is just the commercial part of it, the selling part of it. But when metaverse come, virtual world um, is the infrastructure for virtual world is now you know, in the process of uh, building and making it more possible for everyone. Uh, meaning anyone who wants to get into Web3, like yourself, can just be onboarded very quickly. And then mm. you can reach out millions of people around the world. So I'm, I'm a very outgoing person and I'm friendly. I travel a lot. I make friends very easily. Even that, I can maybe make a thousand friends max a year. But on you know, on the web tree or in this current stage, we can meet a thousand people in a day. So that's a different, yeah. Wow, that's really, really cool. Now, what has been the transition like from being a real estate developer to being a digital entrepreneur? What has that transition been like for you? Well, um, if you ask that, that is a tough, that is a tough decision to make. Uh, um, I, I think, uh, Making that decision, a lot of people around me, including my family, do not understand um, the potential. Mm -hmm. they, they, they cannot accept the fact that I'm put aside something that is physically uh, that I'm good at and I've been doing to do something virtual, which is something intangible to them, mm -hmm. which I do not agree that it's going to be hard to convince them unless they are on board it or unless they're really into it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, being an early adopter also, um, it takes a lot of uh, courage because you need to go in to understand the lingo, the community mm -hmm. thinks differently because uh, language is something that is also important because I think at the current moment, uh, mainstream still, if you, you're able to speak English, you're able to navigate through most of the space. But if you are having a language that's not mainstream, then maybe a little bit difficult. So um, many challenges. Okay, people around you, maybe one to two percent understand what is going on, and may 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 understand, but they may not agree. If I have to spend all my full, you know, focus on just this web trading or metaverse, and um, time. Uh, is 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 uh, prolonged because once you're in Web three world, time zones is is something that you have to manage. Right. So, I probably be very busy during the overlapping of time zone and less busy when when everybody's asleep. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, managing that is a stress. Uh, spending a lot of time online, not only in communicating but learning and actually doing. So that takes up. Uh, um, I mean, just the last year and a half, uh, I, I have to relearn what I didn't know and it's something new and every day is, is, is changing. So to keep up to date is also something that can be stressful to a lot of people, but not for me. I mean, I, I've been always uh, constant self-learning all this time, even I'm in the real estate world. And uh, also probably I have a little bit of an advantage because all the while in my past, even I'm doing real estate, I've I focus a lot of tr on training, you know, uh, uh, conducting training, training my team, uh, focus on that. And also I, I, I handle a lot of marketing uh, strategy 
So in, in, in the Web3 now, even as an individual, you need to know how to train people so that you can bring people to understand you, to understand the technology or understand the, the metaverse or NFT. So if you do not have that training skill, you, 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 you'll be an obstacle. Then the next thing is you may need to know a little bit of marketing, how to market yourself, how to market the products. That also is a key important. So a lot of people who bought into the space felt overwhelmed because you know they got to manage their social media, that's marketing. Okay, that's the first step of marketing, that's social media marketing yourself. That is overwhelmed because there's tons of apps you need to be you need to be on Twitter, you need to be on Instagram, and then the the, the, the more more complex thing is the Discord, which is not, you know, not everybody cups of tea being on Discord. And then here you are, we have we are we need to watch podcasts like what you're doing and maybe involved in podcasts so they can learn. So it's hours of learning, hours of interactions, and also hours of hard work and research work as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Now, what are some other things that you specialize in besides like NFTs and crypto? What are like some other areas in terms of, especially with being a digital entrepreneur that you specialize in? Um, I, I won't say specialize. I think uh, I'm in the probably... Uh, similar to a lot of people who got into the space earlier, we are slightly ahead of a lot of people. So we understand, say, the the the, the minting process. We understand the tokenomics of certain uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, then we, uh, it, for the beginning, it was trying to learn the process using your myself to mm -hmm. either minting of the digital art and then how to market it, how to create a community. So I think. Uh, the main focus currently, uh, and apart from learning the technology, it actually is building of community. I think that's something that I think I'm mainly focusing. So uh, for revolving around building of community, I organize a lot of online activities, just like the recent NFT 99 exhibition, which involved uh, 99 creators or 99 NFT projects coming together in a non-stop uh, presentation for 50 hours plus. So 99, each of them get 30 minutes. They come online, they talk about the projects, and then they have the Q&A with the people in the audience, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So um, during that process, um, especially for new creators who do not have any community, who do not have any followings, they go up stage, they talk about it. First of all, the fellow creators got to know them, get to learn about what they, their process, got to know about how they do it differently from the others. The exchanges happen, connection happen, and then the, in the audience, probably a lot of people just sit quietly and listen. They learn a lot in 50 hours then, you know, if they hop around on a daily couple of hours here, couple of hours there. So it's very focused. Um, that builds community. On top of that, um, um, I do have regular AMA sessions with um, more professional people or experienced people sharing their experience, sharing about their projects. So I've already conducted like more than 300 plus uh, AMA sessions such as this. So this session is like at half an hour to an hour. And then the a NFT exhibition, I've just completed the third one, 3.0, which is about 50 hour plus each. So it, it started in November and then December, the second one, and then the third one just recently, about a week ago. Yeah. All right. Now I want to switch gears and talk about KOLs. Like, can you explain what a KOL uh, means and what it entails? <laughs> okay, uh, KOL. Now, just now uh, I started with talking about uh, why I felt that online um, so-called uh, way of doing business is important. Now, because once you're online, you need somebody to talk about mm -hmm. your products or your services or your branding. So uh, the term KOL is key opinion leader. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something not new, but uh, is used commonly now for uh, somebody in the media as a key opinion person that speaks about a product or brand or services. So uh, in China, uh, they call it live streamer, but their role is actually key opinion leader. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of live streamers are not formally trained. So they use their own way of 
promoting a certain product. So um, there's no methodology about uh, about it. Okay, they happen to be there. They happen to say uh, certain words that are viral. So mm. I mean, people can sell uh, tons of oranges in just an hour because it's they just demonstrated their orange is juicy, you know, fresh, right. plucked out from the farm. So people just just uh, accepted the opinion of this leader. Mm. So, uh, in the older days, we only see co- opini- key opinion leaders who are celebrities mainly, or they are on television. Just as simple as the one talking about the toothpaste that mm. prevent decay of tooth. That guy, that it could be a a, a, a person dressed like a dentist, dentist, right? And he said, this is the right toothbrush to use. This is the right toothpaste to you. So he's the key opinion. So in, with that, translating into the digital world, translating into now the social media world, uh, a lot of key opinion leader, KOL, influencer, or in another way, becomes a prominent, uh, 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 I would say, process of the, the, the marketing now. So if you have big followings, Likely that if you talk about something, then mm. there will more people, you know, whether they accept or they don't accept, but at least the exposure is there. So, for example, one of the footballer, Renano, he's had 440 million followers on Instagram. So, the moment he shared one photograph that he was running on the beach, it's like at least a million people like. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe a, another million people tweet or could be more depending on the, the topics. So if you are a brand uh, company that wants to promote something, you may want to engage them to share a posting and then reach out to millions of people or even more. So it could be 20 million, it could be more. So uh, KOL becomes a profession now. So you are able to build your audience or the followings and you have engagement then you can actually help brands to bring products uh, in a wider reach in a shorter possible time. So it's another skill and then and, and you need to be able to handle because you probably need to talk about different products. You need to know the specification of products, the pricing, the advantages, the selling point, and you probably be talking about another products in a very short time. So yeah, that's KOL. Mm-hmm. Now you've trained 130,000 KOLs. What was that experience like? Well, um, when, I mean, I, I had a, sh- I have an experience in setting up a, a, a live streaming studio with uh, Taobao, one of the top live streaming platforms in China. Mm-hmm. And we wanted it to be a more professional one. We call it the PGC platforms, professionally generated content. Mm-hmm. The normal live streaming like TikTok are uh, called UGC, meaning user generated content. So you don't have to be professional. If you want to sell an apple, you can just sell an apple any way you want it. You can sing a song, you can dance, you can slice the apple. But if it's professionally generated, it's just like a TV production. You have director, you have creators, you have you know writers, everything, and then you have promoters, and then you have coordinated that coordinates the product. So in a PGC. You can sell multiple products, well choreographed, and then uh, uh, there will be certain process. Just a simple two-hour live streaming. That is the you know the ramping up of the viewers, and then the, then somebody watch. Okay, now all the viewers are here, so okay. you you then you start selling the product that you really want to sell. But before that, you'll be wasting your time talking about a product you really want to sell. But you need to use product that attract the customer. So you may want to use lucky draw giveaway, you know, just to let everyone catch their attention and come and listen to your your the live streaming. And live streaming is 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 very stressful. It's, it's real time. So mm-hmm. if you're talking about a product when there's nobody listening to you, you you are wasting a lot of time. But you need to practice that until when millions of people watching you and you say buy this, and everybody just click buy. If you are able to convince them that, then you are you are very very efficient. So, um, the top influencer or, or KOL live live streamer, they change products every three to five minutes. 
That means product A, then product B, every three yeah. minutes after that. You know, people just, just couldn't help, you know. Okay, this is really good. This is cheap now. You buy one, get two. Plop, everybody buy now. Then next product come along, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the, the sort of a, the coordinator, or we call it the director, will say, oh, wow, there's a lot of people are buying this. There are a lot of people inquiring this product. Do you have the red one? Do you have the, the, the medium size? Then he will send us, send come the signal to the live streamer, say, read introduce about this product again stretch the time get exposure again you know mm -hmm. but if that product there's no inquiry and very little you know engagement then right. he may say keep that so um i i have that experience in a very short time and i happen to work with some of the top live streamers but i'm able to put those information into a training program so uh when i'm stuck back in singapore when China was having the major lockdown. A lot of people in China were in, I mean, in, in that situation. They are locked down in their home. They couldn't go out. Business is basically shut. Uh, business was, you know, was really not, I mean, a lot of businesses went bust overnight. So big companies, bosses, they are stuck in their home and nothing can be done unless they start doing something online, which is live streaming at that time. So uh, uh, one particular live streaming platform, pretty new at that time, uh, got to know me through what I did when I was in 20, 2019. Uh, they asked me if I can train some of the live streamer. So it was a casual invitation to train 50 to 200 live streamer, that's it. But not knowing when I started, they did not, they did not control the, the, the inflow of the students. The very first time I started training, it was 500 people online. Hmm. And then the next day is like a thousand. And then it just went on and on. And every day, the numbers went up. And I trained about 300 uh, co-coach. That means they will assist me to run different rooms. Each room is about 500 people. So hmm. they're ongoing. So I, I, in a way, I've been... Uh, forced to actually come out with a training program. So the training program was a seven days program plus a 21 days coaching. So it's really fast. You know, when you're mm -hmm. stuck at home, you can't do anything. And the only way for you to sell your products or, or make money is through live streaming. Everybody in town is doing the same thing. So uh, I have that advantage at that time and uh, students were very eager to learn and especially those without experience, you know, you know, they are, they are even worried about, they can't even talk when they see the cameras turn on on live streaming, they become still and then, you know, mm. and my training involved in helping them to, 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 to manage their fear and then how to speak, uh, how to prepare draft uh, in selling their products, how to make, take advantage of the uh, analytics from different platforms. So, um, and that's how it came about, and and it was by chance. And I I had a I had the intention to help a lot of people, so um, mm -hmm. they don't see it as a, a commercial thing. Okay, they mm -hmm. they didn't, they didn't pay for my services, but they paid for the account setting up of the live streaming platforms. So there were like five hundred thousand people registered for that, but about hundred thirty thousand officially trained by me, but. Mm -hmm. Alongside, there are probably a lot of sub training by other who learn from me, and my training program was, you know, was was taken and 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 used, and they make money by training people. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's very very interesting. Now, I want to get into NFTs. So, what are the things that one should understand before getting into NFTs and Web three? Okay, um, I think that's a good good question. Now. Um, when NFT first started, a lot of people have the impression NFT is about JPEG, an image about uh, some apes, <laughs> bought ape, <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, some crypto cats, uh, or you know some images that was drawn over the years and put them all together in a code. Uh, 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 it's just just JPEG, and why is it costing and selling millions? So um, that was the the early stages of NFT <coughs> and the application of uh, NFT allows uh, uh, a piece of art or image 
that can be authenticated. That means the source, the creators is all registered and when it was created, when it was sold, at what price and how many times it's been transacted. All these are all um, immutable. So you can't change that and it's always there. So that creates a value. So that was the, the, the first generation NFT concept that everybody still stuck to that. So, um, but for successful NFT projects, it's not just the image alone, it's the utility, utility behind the, 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 the owning that digital asset, I call it. So I bought it, you know, by owning that asset, you have right to use the branding, you have right to be in the community, you are in, in the 10,000, one of the 10,000 people who gets um, top information about the, 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 the so-called NFT world, you, you probably get uh, co-branding rights. That is a lot of additional perks that you get if you own one of them. And it's a status thing. You know, if you own a bot ape and you use it as your avatar, wow, you know, everybody just, just see you as somebody who is who's um, the, the the elite in the the so-called crypto world. And, right. and if you're right. worth a lot of money, then you're walking around, you know, you probably won't be walking, you'll be driving Ferraris and Lamborghinis around. So that that's that's how it seems. But uh that was 2021. The, this year uh um uh, is 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 evolved. It has evolved. Brands are coming in. So you've, you've probably seen over the over the years, I mean over the months. Adidas, uh, Starbucks, mm. McDonald's, all coming in. Okay, so NFT has more to it than just because connection. Once you have the connection, you have the engagement. So a lot of th traditional brands have a lot of customer, mm. customer base. Even they have the loyalty program is a one way thing, meaning you can only send information, promotion to the customer in your system if you manage them well. And that's it. But in the NFT world, there is engagement, meaning you're making them part of you. Mm -hmm. They own, in a way, part of your, your community. So they like, they feel more into it. They want to be more involved and they see the value of, you know, owning one of it. So if you own, say, I'm not sure, maybe a, a bot ape now, you want, to, you want to resell it, you make a lot of money. So, um, the utility, utility part becomes a more important component for a lot of business coming in. So um, say uh, Gary B um, uh, created a, a restaurant called the Fly Fish. Before the restaurant was even built, he sold the NFT for owning the rights to enter and use the restaurant. That's all. Okay, just, just a membership, but it's actually an NFT. So being membership, you can rent it out you can sell it eventually. And that doesn't give you free meals. You still have to pay for your meal. Now, that restaurant wasn't even built yet at the time of sales. So I think he, 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 he uh, probably collected like two, three million dollars before even the, the restaurant is built. So that is a, a good adoption and application of NFTs in terms of business. So um, that's, that's, I, that's a take I, I want to share with a lot of people who are coming in. So um, you can be an artist, okay? That is just a pure a collectible kind of a, a utilities in terms of NFTs. That is the business component of it. Like what I just mentioned, you want to, you want to have an NFT for the restaurant, they give membership, a loyalty program. Uh, then there is the play to earn. Then there is the real estate asset of it, meaning you can buy a digital land through NFTs. You can trade them or you can buy wearables, which is now the in thing. Now you can buy a, a, a Adidas t-shirt, which is digital. You don't get in the real world or you may get a one, real one in the real world. So we call it digital, physical plus digital is called digital. So uh, even brand like uh, Gucci, LV, they already have their NFT products up in the market. And they even have their so-called Web3 store. You can go to a virtual store, buy a Gucci bag or LV bag that is uniquely yours. Mm -hmm. And 
sometimes costs more expensive than the physical one even. Okay, but you can wear it and use it when you are in the virtual world with your avatars. You can wear a cap or Adidas track shoes, uh, t-shirts, jeans, etc. There's so many things coming up. Uh, so 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 much things. So um, that is that is how uh, I would like to explain about NFTs. Mm, that's very very interesting. Now I want to get into some of the platforms that you're familiar with, which is Akasha GL and Popoology.org. Tell us about these platforms. Well, Akasha GL is um, is a metaverse project. Uh, they they wanted to create uh, the next generation to, uh, metaverse, similar to what is currently in the market, like the central land sandbox. So they want to be more realistic, immersive, using uh, uh, the current top-notch uh, uh, engine software engine to create that to make it more realistic and then you can own them so all these projects are all in the startup stage so it's really tough and they need a lot of uh, developer developing it they need a lot of trial they need a lot of specialist no need just you know building that platforms so um i have known akasha for more than six months when I did my first NFT 1999 November, they, I really got to know them. He was building it, was promoting it. So um, he has, Akasha, the, the founder, he has to balance between building the community and building the, the, the platforms. It's really hard because it involves time, especially money. So you need investment, you need constant, you need to engage people, you need to employ people. You may collab, but at the end of the day, it's so complex. You need to own certain things. So that part takes up a lot of time. And then at the same time, you need to build community. So a lot of balancing. And if any one of these doesn't work well, you know, the project is going to be hard to move forward. I won't say it failed. It will be hard to move forward. So there are probably thousands of such projects or maybe more every day created. Uh, that is the so-called metaverse version of a platforms. Uh, then NFT marketplace platforms are, are also uh, popular ones that a lot of people wants to create. So you create platforms where people can mint their you know, NFT, they can sell the NFT, uh, and you you also need a lot of engagement and community. Uh, one uh, so called popular ones is the called sports NFT and uh, marketplace where a lot of athletes, footballer. Um, or even horse race, they traditionally they have a lot of followings. So if they win a match, you know, they are they are photograph the, the the winning last shot, you know, the basketball. All these are actually all can be uh, created as NFT and to be uh, so called traded in a secondary market. So mm -hmm. there is already a lot of NFT, sports NFT related uh, marketplace, but they are still coming up a lot because there's so many sports all over the world and mm -hmm. they're different year, different level. You know, uh, I'm involved in a, a few uh, who are in the horse racing. So they wanted mm -hmm. to, to NFT the horse itself before the race so that you can own part of the horse uh, in fractions. And then if the horse win, you, you gain something out of it. So it's some kind of investment. Or you saw a footballer that is, you know, up and coming. So it's going to be a superstar. You can actually own his NFT. And when he becomes a superstar, you can actually trade his NFT that you, you own. So uh, this is also popular. And then the, the next big one is uh, Play to Earn. This is another platform that is uh, like XC Infinity. So a lot of people own little digital pads inside the platforms and then you play games with it and you, you do a lot of um, um, so-called challenges and you win something in terms of tokens. And then the, even the, the, the little monsters there, you can breed them and then they have little, little uh, new ones that you can sell them and they grow and then you can continue to breed them and match them and then they come out with special skill separate special traits and make it even more unique and then you can sell them again so a uh, lot is happening play to earn sports nfts uh metaverses so metaverses is 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 
something that can encompass all this all together, just like a sandbox. You can build games inside there by owning the, the, the digital asset. The, you can build a building with, you can build a casino inside there. You can, you know, allow people to, to gamble and you make money out of it. You can, you can build a, a fashion store where you sell wearables and you, you can allow people to sell the products there. Or you can you can build a games or multiple games for people to just play and enjoy and they, they pay you money. And they're even as simple as you own a piece of land, you just put a signboard out there and for, for lease, for rent, and people make money out of it. So all kinds of things in very similar to the real world. Yeah. Mm. Now is Popoology like the same thing? Is it like a metaverse platform? What what type of site is popoology.org? Uh Popoology. Uh, it's concept I think he has for a long, long time. Okay, mm-hmm. Dore, uh, he wanted to be a content aggregators platforms. So now, like yourself, like a lot of influencer or, or, or KOL, the only value that you have is constantly giving content. So I always use the word content. Content is an asset in the digital world. So if your content becomes viral, Chances is you have a lot to gain. Firstly, you build more following. Secondly, you become more popular. Thirdly, there are brands that may want to engage you to help promote their products. So mm-hmm. ability to build content is a very, it's just something not easy. Okay, Just like you, you need to constantly create podcasts. You need to always bring in people. But then that is just creation alone. Ability to market them to use them for repurposing into different platforms to gain more engagement is another different skill. So apology um, that I, I, I also have a chance to collaborate in there with them and they're also trying very hard to help a less experienced individual who wants to come in and build their own content using AI automations. So say you pick a topic, say uh, basketball, for example, you key in basketball and you say year 2020, for example. Then the AI will go and search from all the search engine around the world in the internet, bring them all the content that is popular and valuable in front of you. And then you can decide to stitch them together to create into a content that is yours. Something similar on this sense. So I, I'm not sure how, how much do you know about biology? Did you? Um, not much. Um, I seen it in your uh, in your bio in terms of the platforms, but I didn't know much about it. Yeah. So so basically, uh, it's also uh, a, a project that's been ongoing for a long long time, in, involved in helping the individual even without experience to able to create content that is automated, generated, and likely to be able to create a lot of engagement. So the the the, the AI takes over to say or oh, decide to pay. This is, this is the content that a lot of people watch and it's going to watch. And you put them together with another uh, 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 so-called viral video and stitch them together. You create a, an entirely new content that is yours, owned by you. And this, the platform allows you to monetize using that. Okay, mm. that, That's the, 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 the basic of it. On top of that, you are able to pick advertisements, snippets, clips to add it including it to make your whole uh, content even more valuable because if someone will click it and watch it you get paid for that so it's, it's an entirely new concept uh, in the past maybe you need to be manually done with multiple parties even companies or media company to able to do that but with this uh, it, it shortens the process you can do it automated and you can create a lot of content constantly with that. So this is something I saw the value and, and um, again, involve a lot of um, early stages developments, um, basically uh, a lot of time and also building the community. So uh, I'm, I'm involved in, in, in the early stage and uh, I do spend time with them and, and, and yeah, hopefully, um, when things are more, I, there's a lot of videos uh, showing how the whole uh, um, final products will look like. It's like your personal, how do I say? 
personal assistant when you want to create content okay you know there's a topic that you want or there's a person that you want to create content you just key in and then they will search from all this all the all the information in in the web and then put them in front of you and then you decide stick them together yeah mm. now i want to go ahead and switch gears and talk about metaverse generation so how did that get started okay well that's another long long story <laughs> you really you really picked the right question to uh, i mean well that's 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 the that's that's your job to make this <laughs> interview. now um just backtrack a little bit. I mentioned the, my, my live streaming training. So I train a lot of live streamer. Uh, when I'm stuck in, in, in Singapore after 12 years in China, I basically uh, uh, do not have any uh, engagement in terms of all my social media outside China because you know there are restrictions between different regions. So China have their own live streaming. They have their own social media, which I'm very familiar with. I have sort of, you know, I could not access when I was in China for the last 12 years. And, and I so I've, I've sort of abandoned all my social media. And you, you can see that I have a, not many followings. It's, I just started building them and using them. So uh, Clubhouse was one of the most used social media platforms that I, when I was, you know, stuck in Singapore from 2020. So uh, then... Oh, sorry, 2021, that's where I, where I first started. Now, um, I have a lot of uh, inquiry and students, especially uh, from Malaysia. In Singapore, our lockdown was basically over. We could do some activities, but in Malaysia, it was locked down for a long, long time. A lot of business was really, you know, basically not, not in operation. So there were a lot of people in the community uh, looking for solution. So I decided to help them to bring some of those uh, um, way of doing this online, like the live streaming back to Malaysia. So I started actually uh, uh, M99. Okay, I wanted to train 99, just 99 business owner, small enterprise business owner or individual who wants to continue to do their business online while they're in lockdown. So that's there I have a lot of engagement and started a lot of students. So over time, during the period, Clubhouse and of course the markets uh, saw the, the, the boom in the NFT and the metaverse. Mm. So some of the students say, hey, uh, you know, PK, we, we want to learn. We want to get involved because that's the next hot thing. And being online is just not enough. So I... I have to force myself to be ahead of them because I, I need to do something about it. And at the same time, I'm interested. So I have to set up a, a, a brand or something to, to bring everybody together. Uh, the keyword was metaverse. So uh, at the time previously, we was just uh, 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 called it a KOL, influencer, live streaming. So I, I, I needed to think of what's next. Mm -hmm. So very simple. Generation is, is the next generation. So metaverse generation came uh, when I was thinking, what's going to be next? I think we all want to be in the metaverse generations. So being in the metaverse generation is not your age. It's not the year you are born. It's the year you are involved. You know, mm -hmm. you are Zen Z or Zen Y, that's depending on the year you are born. And at that time, but in metaverse generation, there's no age, there's no gender, there's no male, female. You can be either both or both, okay? And then you can be age zero or 99, depending. It doesn't really matter. Or, and even, I mean, culturally, you can be white, you can be black, you can be blue, you can be green, you know? Right. You can be any form. You can be a, you can be a, a ape. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Yeah, or it can be just 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 something that's ridiculously you know alien or something. So uh, mm -hmm. that's where I created a Metaverse Generation uh, uh, and started a series of uh, similar like you, but uh, a voice podcast kind of a, a program that really talks about Metaverse, talk about what is up and coming, and and uh, inviting speakers who are uh, in the forefront. 
uh, one of the earlier ones were the people that I worked with in China back in 2016, when I was already involved in VR, AR, and, and similar concept of, of a, 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 a virtual environment. But at the time, there wasn't technology or platforms that were able to sustain that. So I have to you know, wait till now. So in, back in 2016, I even built infrastructure such as uh, similar to the Pokemon in China. So you can actually use a phone and that creature pops out when you're walking in your mall, you know, or somebody just, just pop out and you can interact, you can play games. Uh, right. And then this same group of people has been constantly upgrading themselves. They are probably now one of the top uh, people in the industry in Hong Kong and Asia, uh, creating avatars, virtual avatars, creating gaming, and also moving into the NFT space and metaverse as well. So uh, when metaverse generation started, uh, we have a lot of people who are interested uh, came in as a community. So it's, it's, it's not really something that is mine or just mine alone. So it's, it's everybody who wants to learn. So when I pick up something that is valuable, I will bring those information and then either to the form of audio, podcast, or uh, we, we host room and talk about it. And then Metaverse Generation becomes the host or organizer for NFT99. And the more people got to know and, and I think that's the trend now, you know, a lot of people set up a lot of different groups. So I thought Metaverse Generation would be a more general thing than just NFT alone, because NFT is also part of the whole Web3, Metaverse is also part of Web3, and even inclusive of tokens and, 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 and cryptocurrency as well. So it's wider and mm. it, it really uh, uh, um, so-called identify the people who are in this generation yeah just like yourself you are you are considered the metaverse generation but we are <laughs> we are years apart right <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i definitely want to get back into nfts really quickly and i want to go ahead and ask you mentioned about minting nft so what is minting an nft what is that okay um minting nft meaning you're converting a digital image into metadata. So uh, okay. using a blockchain technology, uh, the tech part of it is not my, my cup of tea, but um, I'm happy that someone did that for me. So I only need to press that button and it goes into the blockchain mm-hmm. and can be seen by anybody who goes into the search and they'll be able to identify who's creator, when it was created, how many copies are there, and was it sold to someone else at what particular price and resold at what price? So it's all, uh, um, there's a ledger, okay? Mm-hmm. So they're using the blockchain technology uh, for distributed ledger. So once that is converted into metadata, cannot be changed anymore. So that image, I cannot modify it. I cannot say it's mine. If it's not mine, if I didn't create it, I can't say it's, if I create today, I can't say I created it yesterday. So it's immutable. That, that, that is uh, NFT, yeah. So also with NFTs, I looked at an article and they talked about like an NFT could be someone's consciousness downloaded on the blockchain. So where do you, how do you foresee NFTs progressing in terms of the role and the definition of NFTs? Well, um, it's just my personal opinion. I think N- NFT will evolve. Eventually it may not be called NFT anymore in, 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 in the future, but the concept of it will stay. Uh, I use that word content a lot. I use the word asset a lot. So having a content, say it can be a picture, it can be a painting, it can be a recording of a voice, a music, a song, or a video of certain event, whether it can be of any length, any format, basically. Once you uh, mint it, cover it to a metadata, you are creating a digital asset. Mm-hmm. So content become an asset. So if there wasn't a uh, blockchain technology, the asset is can be duplicated. And someone can just screenshot it. Someone can just, you know, download it and then send it away and copy it. So that was in the older days. But with NFT, you can't do that anymore. You can screenshot it. But once you check and trace back, you know who is the original owner. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that metadata recorded who created it, 
when it was created or how many people jointly created it. All this information is there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if Picasso at his time has NFT, there probably won't will not be a lot of you know fake Picasso painting out there. You know, you'll be able to tell. Mm -hmm. so that, that that is how I see. So, content converting to digital asset in the blockchain. That is how it's going to be. So, in the future, it may not call it NFT anymore. It may be called something else. But then that is one part. Then with that, if you can so called link or support by utilities, meaning services that you can product, uh, uh, benefits they can uh, adopt again while owning that asset. It's just like a membership, you know, the perks you can gain. And maybe, or not maybe, and even uh, value, you gain value. So there's something that uh, uh, upgraded the traditional uh, so-called collection of arts, collection of antiques. I mean, those were happening many, many years. I mean, for example, your dad say he owns a Mercedes Benz back in 1970. Okay, 1974, I own one of the Mercedes Benz in 19, 1974. If I preserve it till today, I still own that car. But if someone steal it from me, it's going to be sometimes hard to prove. Okay. And if I want to transfer to somebody else, I need a lot of paperwork and it's complicated. But if it's converted into a digital asset like NFT, they knew exactly when I own it, who built it, when it was created, and if I transfer it to somebody else or I don't transfer, it's always recorded there. So you see that value there is different. If it's, I mean, stealing it on NFT, not that it's impossible, but it's, it's hard, harder mm -hmm. and can always trace but a physical car you know mine was stolen and the guy who steal it and sold it or scrap it there's no way i can get it back so uh, recently in singapore there was a case where a guy uh went to court and 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 uh so-called legally acquired back his nft that was so-called stolen yeah so so, so the court recognizes it as a, a, a real asset Mm, that's very interesting. Now, what are the current goals in your career in terms of being involved in NFTs and Web3? Uh, well, it's pretty complex. Now, um, I can't say a uh, uh, current goal, but my, I think my vision is try and educate as many people. I think that's a selfish thought because the more people knows about it, the chances is I, I'll be able to sell my services, so to speak. But again, I also want to, to actually help people to understand that this will be the future, whether yeah. you like it. It's just like when, you know, internet came about, a lot, a lot of people still didn't. I was one of the earlier adopters at that time, you know, clicking into www. Is, is, is something that is half an hour to upload one web page. And that modem that you have is going at a, a, a really slow speed. You know, the, the, the pages just came out slowly and then you hear the sound clack, clack, clack. So uh, it's scary when they know that uh, Metaverse Web3 is coming, it's already here. So right. there are people who live, eat, sleep in Metaverse. And some do make money, the smarter ones and those who understand how to use it. So I think uh, as where I am now, I think education becomes a major part of it. And hopefully ed educating people allows me to make a living out of it, if I'm lucky, or even mm -hmm. make some money out of it. So, uh, but then there's also the, another part of not just educating it, individual, but brands, companies that need to go into the space as quickly as possible so that they will not be, you know, they will still continue to survive. Um, statistically, that is really, really a very small percentage of the companies that really know about it, willing to learn about it, or really to invest on it. So it's just very hard decision. But I think COVID, and in a way, force, forces people to, to go virtual. Uh, but then again, you know, if you have been operating in the real world without any involvement, even in social media, it's really very difficult. So I hope to be that that 
that that that uh, person to help some of this as much as I can, and also to train people to have that mindset, you know. So um, yeah, I, if if that is in a in a simpler form, yeah. Mm. Now, last but not least, where can people find on social media if they have any questions pertaining to NFTs and Web three, and what are some current events um, that are coming up? Um. Well, I'm 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 in Connect Club most of the time now, okay. Because uh, you can find me on social media uh, and then on Clubhouse. Uh, up and coming events, there's a um, music concert, virtual music concert called Connectella. I'm I'm hosting the five hour world stage, where about eight to ten musicians will be coming to perform digitally. So they don't they may not be physically there, but they are performing. Mm. Uh, I have a host, Kafi. She, she may be hosting, but she may not be physically there. So it's all online and virtual. It's happening on the 29th uh, for five hours and together with other stage that's ongoing at the same time. This is uh, organized by Connect, uh, Connect Club and, and uh, Meta Leader Club. So I'm, I'm just handling the world stage where I got a few people from different parts of the world to perform. So uh, that's the upcoming on the 29th. Then in the month of June, 3rd of June to 3rd of July, a full month is going to be digital 2022. It's a full month virtual events where anybody, it doesn't mean NFT, it doesn't mean whether anybody who wants to go into the digital world, wants to learn about it, can come and participate this event organized by TSA. Uh, the owner is Min Kwan, she's in Canada. So she built this. I always call it an educational platforms rather than just pure NFT platforms. Mm -hmm. So going to one single platform by going through the steps, which is much easier than I when I was doing it a year and a half ago, uh, that you learn about minting, you learn about NFTs, you learn about staking, you learn about magic boxes, you learn about the entire process all the way to Metaverse. So um, yeah, that's something that's happening uh, shortly and in, 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 in the in the month of June, yeah. Cool, cool. Well, thank you so much, BK, for jumping onto the show. Um, thank you so much for giving me advice in terms of how to improve my podcast. It helps a lot. Uh, thank you so much for jumping onto the show. I love the knowledge and you know your story. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you. My pleasure. So, well, I'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews involving Web3, NFTs, crypto, and the metaverse.